Aloha, and welcome back to Politics in Hawaii with Dennis Esaki on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we'll be speaking with Stephanie Ohigashi, Democratic Party leader on Maui and Hawaii. She's also the Maui field rep for Congressman Kai Kahele. She grew up with politics on Maui and still resides there. She danced for a statehood celebration in 1959 and JFK's campaign in 1960. I first met Stephanie at Tip Top Cafe on Kauai. <laughs> uh, that, that was uh, over 20 years ago. And many years uh, later at a funeral on Maui, she told a friend that she had met me at Tip Top. So I was, I was impressed. Uh, Stephanie, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. And um, I hope the party chair, Tyler Dos Santos, Tam brought you some good roast duck the other week. Uh, <laughs> please, please tell us about your, your history with politics in Hawaii. <laughs> thank you, Dennis, and thank you to Think Tech Hawaii for inviting me. And yes, you know, Honolulu has all the great Chinese restaurants. And uh, one thing my husband and I really, really love is roast stuff. So thanks to Tyler. Um, let me see, what can I say? Uh, I, I had, oh, Jesus. I was brought up, like you said, in a, in a political family. My mother's sister was married to Mayor Eddie Tan. And so um, we, my mother was going to like uh, beauty school. And so she kind of had to go back and forth to Honolulu for classes and exams. So I was under the care of her sister, Tam, And so I was surrounded by politicians from an early, early, early age. This was during the territorial days, even before statehood. So I was familiar with the Board of Supervisor leaders. And um, I attended pretty much all the rallies. Back in the 50s, rallies had both Republicans and Democrats. I don't know, Dennis, you're younger than me. Do you remember? The big old fashioned rallies at the Yes, ballpark. I remember it. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> so those days were really great. And I remember big carnation days that all the politicians had. And I would travel along with Eddie Tam to Lanai, Molokai, Hana, you know, wherever they had rallies, he would take me along because I was their little in house hula dancer, <coughs> <or> Japanese <coughs> Korean dancer. Yeah, it's free entertainment. But um, one thing really struck, uh, according to me is how far the Democrats will go to um, meet up with grassroots supporters. I mean, flying into Lanai, landing on the tarmac and having a rally right there, and then serving hot dogs and orange soda, you know, is really embedded in my mind that the Democrats were there from day one to push their 1954 revolution ahead. And I appreciate you know, the hard work uh, of those grassroots efforts. So even before I officially joined in 1980, um, I was invited many, you know, uh, events internationally because Eddie Tam was a lion, and I would go to Kona and Hawaii and Honolulu for lions conventions. I met leaders from all over the world, so it kind of started my interest in global or international relationships. But my my good friend Martin Luna, uh, Wailuku attorney invited me to a precinct meeting in 83. And I said, what's a precinct? And he said, never mind, just come. So <laughs> he said he needed help with somebody to take minutes. Well, I got elected county secretary that night and I got elected vice chair the next session in 1984. And I've been going ever since. It's been crazy roller coaster. And my husband's just waiting for me to get off this <laughs> roller coaster of Democratic Party volunteerism. But um, I really enjoyed it. I don't think there's a finer group of hardworking grassroots members and elected officials in the world that is so uh, collaborative and, and willing to work together. Besides, you know, Democratic Party, do some other community service, and you got a real job too, right? <laughs> I have a real job, so I'm on my lunch break right now. I'm the international and regional coordinator for UH Hawaii College. I create partnerships with universities in Japan, Korea. You know, uh, I was on a Zoom, six o'clock Zoom with Portugal this past week, 6 a.m. with Tyler and my chancellor. And it was, and Mayor of Maui, Mike Victorino. Um, and we have creating relationships um, 
for the benefit of our community. So we're talking about things like J-1 visas for internships in hospitality, things that can come back to us in the workforce development. And um, it's really a lot of fun, but it's also rewarding to see that, you know, uh, international relationships can play a role in the future of Hawaii. I'm so happy to be part of it. <laughs> And I also belong, okay, the state community. Um, I'm the Sister Cities International Hawaii State Representative. I, along with uh, 50 other state reps, advise the states on all the opportunities at Sister Cities International. So I work with Kauai County, Kauai County, believe it or not, uh, City County of Honolulu, uh, and make um, connections between us of mutual benefit. So night in, I think a couple of years ago, Dash, the Japan American Society of Hawaii with Rena Kaneko. We wanted to do a sister city summit with all Japanese sister cities, because it seems like all four counties have a lot of Japanese sister cities. And then COVID hit. So we pushed back that Japanese sister city summit to 2023. And I'll be working on that with Rena and the Japanese American Society of Hawaii. And that's part of my community. <laughs> participation. Yes, I'm uh, familiar with Josh as I work with uh, Reina on the, um, the Crown Prince Akihito Scholarship uh, ah. Foundation. Um, you also worked with uh, Mayor Victorino. It, well, um, for 10 years, I was his executive assistant at the County of Maui. I was in charge of all our international sister cities relationships there as well, and created a lot of relationships under his guidance. So, and of course I did the normal stuff like amend codes, uh, you know, and create legislation for the betterment of his district, which was why we moved. And I still have a really strong working relationship with Mayor Victorino, who actually happens to be my first cousin. I don't know if you knew that. But um, his mother and my father are sister and brother, and uh, we we enjoy working together. You know, uh, to create the new tourism, uh, the environmental and eco tourism that is needed here uh, for the future. If we're going to you know, be sustaining our economy, seems like you got a lot of relatives in <laughs> in office. <laughs> um, getting back yeah. to the Democratic Party, yeah, under understand it was. Uh, formed, Democratic Party of Hawaii was formed in 1900 uh, by supporters of the Queen who was overthrown. Uh, and, and it was in the wake of the plague, the bubon, bubonic plague, which is kind of ironic uh, that we're in such a situation right now. Uh, oh. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the Democratic Party, um, what, what it's doing right now? Well, you know, funny you should mention that because all we do is talk about how we're gonna function during the pandemic. And luckily for us, uh, we, we didn't see it coming, but we saw the need to be tech savvy uh, when I was state party chair in 2014. And we looked, the, Dem the DNC gave each 50 states uh, a chunk of money to upgrade our tech support systems in data, um, in cybersecurity, in managing membership um, information. So right now, I, I you know it fluctuates up and down, but the party has almost eighty thousand registered members statewide, and um, that means we're a really big business, and we have a lot of people to handle. We have a lot of constituent requests. We don't only just um, go campaign door to door and you know have rallies. We run a official business, uh, providing legislative support, uh, helping and training our uh, would be and wanna be candidates for elected officials. We're constantly recruiting younger members of society to be young Democrats. A lot of our elected officials today, like Senator Gil Keith Agarad, I met him when he came back from college from Yale and he called me because I happened to be the party chair there. He goes, oh, I want to start a Young Democrats chapter in Maui. So I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> he picked me up in his old bus up, meet up 
pickup truck. And I thought, what are we doing? Are we gonna go round up kids from the street? So he actually had a plan and we met with a group of uh, young people, Hawaiians. And uh, in Kihei, we had our first you know, Young Democrats kickoff meeting. But till today, in fact, I got an email from Senator Gilkeith Agawam today, having a meeting uh, to recruit more young people into the party. And this is, this is what we have to do because most of us have been here for years and years. Uh, we want to see the next generation of leaders you know, start to take over. So I applaud Gil for reaching out and, and continuously looking to and train the next um, generation of leaders. So we have Representative Troy Hashimoto from Maui, who is my colleague at um, Maui County Council. He worked for Mike White. I worked for Mike Victorino. We call ourselves the Stereos because we, were, we had two mics to deal with. But anyway, um, we, uh, I enjoy working with the Maui legislative team. Uh, Kyle Yamashita, he's very quiet, but very uh, strong in his advocacy for health and education. And all of them um, really surpass my you know, uh, expectations uh, of them as leaders. And so they surprised me quite often. So right now, what the party is doing, Dennis, is preparing for 2022. And so 2022 is the biennial year that every we all get together statewide to be attending our precinct meetings. And the last in-person precinct meeting we had was in 2020. Just before COVID hit, we managed to have in-person meetings all across the state. They usually are held in cafeterias or um, you know, libraries where your precincts could go and, and get elected precinct officer, delegate to your county convention, delegate to the state convention. Well, that's all changed. We've had to and we've been forced to pivot to online voting. So in 2022, early on, maybe March, February, March, we're going to have our very first digital precinct and district election. We're not quite sure how successful it's going to be. But we really have no choice because we can't bring people together. So it's really going to be a test and we want to learn from it. We know it's not going to be perfect. People are used to showing up. You know, Democrats, they want to go talk story with their friends in their neighborhood. I did it. So yeah. that's what's happening for us is to prepare for 2022. Yeah, you know, um, started a long time ago in the plantation days. Um, and then you got the Elmer Cavallo days were you involved with the uh, Elmer and Calvin Nimoto and that group? Of course, um, Calvin was county chair and I was his vice chair. And Elmer was state house uh, speaker, of course. I know him personally and uh, I grew up with him, his family, his nieces and nephews were all family friends. I didn't have such a great relationship with him when I was county chair because I'm of a different generation, but we worked together for the sake of, you know, of moving our agenda forward. But he was pretty much one of the most visionary mayors this state has had when he decided to launch tourism in Kanapali. I have to take uh, credit a little bit because Eddie Tam went with uh, AMFAC and Seabird to plant the seeds. Uh, for the, the build out of the Sheraton. So this was before Elmer came back. And, um, you know, Elmer really did carry the ball because he said he wanted quality tourism, not quantity tourism. I think his words are coming back to hearken us to action. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I remember. Uh... We used to call you know the old timers like card carrying Democrats. I remember getting a I don't remember getting a card. I don't know where it went, and I don't see anybody <laughs> carrying cards now. A lot of people, a lot of people in office, they you know they never got a card. So um, it's it's different now. I mean now you got you got to deal with the millennials, like a different generation. So how do you deal with? Uh, you know, the, the ongoing controversy about the cards is, is the story's not ended yet. Um, with 80,000 members and renewals and people come off, come back on, you know, issuing cards is a big job for a one person office. Um, during my tenure as chair, we had a machine and um, would take the machine around the state and people join or they are members 
if they wanted a laminated card, we would they would pay us, and we were like pumping out cards like the Lord. But I, I think that is that is something that um, people really want. They want some identity with the party. And I've talked to Tyler. We've all talked to Tyler. And all you get is an email back saying, thank you for joining the party. It doesn't quite ring the bell as looking at your card in your wallet. They said, oh, yeah, the kind when signed my car, you know, Jack Richardson, you know, Jimmy Kumo guy. Those are really cool memorabilia. So um, somewhere along the line, I think we'll return to a, a card that you could purchase. And uh, we've mentioned it over and over. So stay tuned. Yeah, but, uh, well, in today's uh, computer age, it's going to be on the computer too, just like the vaccination yeah. cards. And your insurance card from Geico. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just download yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, it's not as pretty, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, uh, well, we got to get some donation from Geico. <laughs> uh, and I, you, uh, we mentioned that uh, Tyler a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Just just to show what generation gap. Here's my uh my son's classmate, you know, a long time ago. So he's uh he's the Democratic Party chair oh, for yeah. the state right now, right? Yes. Yeah. He's an up and coming and um have you had him on your show yet? Not not yet. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll okay. talk to him, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, talk to him on on Oahu and on Kauai, though. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to show you some pictures. Oh, yeah. I, I'm yeah, keeping track of my, my yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go over some of your uh, photographs. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, anyway, what is... Um, loading. Yeah, what is loading that? Uh, and getting back to I, the... I, yeah, go ahead. Getting back to the in a new generation, uh, some people call it call it the me generation, which is different from what you know the original Democratic Party uh, ideals. Um, you see any of that? I do, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that because I think the party has evolved and it has to evolve if we want to be relevant. And I work really well with the me generation or Gen Z or. You know, whoever's coming next, because remember now, we are um, broad and we are encapsulating the best of who we are here in Hawaii. So we want to be able to work with the millennials. They bring a lot to the table. They've got the, they're tech savvy and they are hungry to participate and be part of the Democratic Party. Yeah, they, they, they don't like dinosaurs sometimes like me hanging around, but um, they're willing to work yeah. with me. Yeah. <laughs> a while back, you lobbied for the open primary. What? Some, and uh, I guess your opponent didn't like it. Open primary where anybody can vote for you know, in the primary. You want to mention something about that? Uh, you mean Tony Gill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he had a lawsuit actually that the party was trying to change things and it didn't, you know, it didn't uh, survive. Uh, I think it was the Ninth Circuit that it, it went up as far as that. And that, I don't think that was the reason he lost the election to me. I do know that um, when I decided to throw my hat in the ring in 2014, the day before John Wahe had come to Maui for our county convention, and that was for me the end. I was like, oh, I'm how I'm done. And uh, I found out that there was only one candidate for a state party chair. And I said, oh, how come? Normally we have plenty of people running so the next day was the deadline uh, to run May 4th. So I emailed my application just to give party members a choice. That's all it was. And my husband said, oh, yeah, go ahead, because he didn't think I'd win anyway. <laughs> so it was no problem. And for 30 days, I called everybody. I remember I called uh, Jimmy Tokioka. I said, hey, Jimmy, you're going to support me. He said, who this? And I said, um, <laughs> nobody, nobody knew who I was. <laughs> And he said, okay, he would support me if I promised to come to Hawaii. He said, nobody ever comes here. I said, I promise. <laughs> and I kept that promise. I, kept, I went to every colony number of times. So um, I think it's a matter of being accessible. And even though I didn't know anything and I didn't know how a lot of people, I still prevailed because the party knew that I would work hard. So, but as far as Tony Gill is concerned, his um, open primary thing is still not a popular 
subject to broach. Um, I think there's a couple legislators that want to uh, you know, go back to that, but they haven't done it so far. So right now, we'll just stick to the party run of primaries. Okay. Thanks. Um, you know, I've noticed uh, some of the uh, photos showed you with, you know, like Senator Inouye, Senator Inouye and, and others, Hillary. I guess the, it's been due with the... Yeah, that's when um, yeah. She, uh, her husband was running for office. We invited her to Hawaii. She also sent her daughter to Maui. But, you know, uh, it was Bill, Bill Clinton's birthday, so we presented her with a huge Snoopy because Bill Clinton loves Snoopy and all of us Democrats, we just sign our names and she, she loved it. But she was really down to earth uh, a really classy, you know, woman. That's why I supported her for president. Even though in the in the press and some mainland press they call me Hillary's uh, crime boss or something, I see some hit pieces on me and I, wow, yeah. <laughs> interesting. And when you're talking about uh, a lot of people signed up for the Democratic Party at one time, a lot of them did during uh, Obama's first run for uh, oh. office. You know, they were flooding the. Uh, Oh. Democratic uh, headquarters to sign up. You know, they didn't have a card, but at least they, they wanted to be a Democrat to be part of. Yeah, and Obama did a lot of that because he was on the radio encouraging people to join the party. And so it was chaos for sure. And, uh, but you know, we may do. I remember uh, Senator Gil Kidagaran once again, he was at Baldwin High School, and we ran out of ballots because who knew that thousands would show up? And he had. Um, um, an illegal tablet in his car. Well, of course, lawyers always carry around yellow legal tablets. <laughs> so he ran out, he broke them into pieces, and he, you know, they were flying everywhere. <laughs> but the minute that day was over, unfortunately, the, there, there wasn't a whole lot of sincerity in the people who joined the party. They just joined to vote for him. And they did it again it, to for Bernie Sanders. You know, I have to say that, that it was a necessary thing. They have to join to vote. Uh, and then they came off the party. But the majority of those who joined stayed with us to give us a chance. So the party will really grow because of Obama and Bernie Sanders. So for that, I'm really thankful. Yeah. So we don't have much time. I, I wonder if more of the pictures were shown or uh, I do have an interesting picture of people in Makawao sign waiting for Kennedy in the 60s. Yeah. I, I think you did show it already on okay. the top. I didn't mean to show you the bottom of this. <laughs> <Just Okay. not. laughs> oh, but anyway. Yeah, so uh, one of my mentors is Senator Mamori Yamasaki. Uh, I worked really closely with him when he was on WAM. And I wanted, I was lobbying for a coalition of early childhood education uh, agencies. So I asked him for money for this program, you know, zero three in Hawaii and NPAS. What year was that? Oh gosh, uh, in the eighties, like nineteen eighty, I want to say two or three, something like that. And um, he he did uh, appropriate funds for Maui, and uh, there was a Waimanalo group and the Y and I. That they said, "Well, how come you giving the money to Maui? You know, we have more, you know, situations here that uh, require the money." And he said, "Because I'm from Maui, and I said so." And I really um, admire that because he knew he was taking a chance with us, but he did. And we proved that um, that agency was only five people. Now it's 35 people. So uh, he, his investment with us really paid off. But I am the inheritor of the whole Mamoru Yamasaki archives. And I have his Senate jacket and his bowling shirts and all his pictures. And someday I hope that I can showcase them. And, uh, you know, because when he... He never got married. He never had children. He lived for and worked for all of Hawaii's children. On his gravestone, it says Memoria Masaki for the children. So his legacy uh, lives on. Where do you see the party going now? You know, we talked about the party, the past, and some changes. Some people signed, you know, signed up just so they could vote for a certain the party. The party is person. going to, you know, well, <laughs> the governor's race is the hot topic, you know. And for me on Maui, I am hosting three events coming up with Kirk Caldwell, uh, Josh Green, and Vicky Cayetano, just to get them familiar with uh, Maui's 
democratic leadership. It's going to be small events. We're not going to, um, you know, break any restrictions. But I think that uh, we have three very interesting candidates for governor. And who knows more may come. But those are the three major um, candidates. And I think the party will will evolve as a digital platform for its membership and it, our elected leaders. They were moving and pivoting towards the digital age and incorporating apps and data management to match the time and to make us more accessible to the voters. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, uh, in, in a way, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, with uh, the party started in the wake of the bubonic play, and now we, you know, we got this pandemic. Uh, a while back, we had uh, the state didn't have money, so the government cut back on uh, and the rodent control. They did the whole program that uh, vector control, and then later on, lo and behold, we get that. Red, red lungworm disease. So we gotta be careful on what you know what we cut back. Of, of course, there was a, there, there was the other party, but <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, what what do you see? What else do you see the party doing? Like, I think the party has to partner with the community. We can't only be playing politics. I think we have to be involved with um, pushing. You know the. The, I, I don't want to say the new green deal, but I think we have to push sustainability, food security. We've been so reliant. Everybody knows that we've been talking to a blue in the face about it. And we have to train our workforce to be able to um, meet the future needs of work. I mean, who knew you could be a Facebook manager or a TikTok developer? You know, those words did not appear in career paths in the past. But now the future of work is evolving so rapidly that all, all entities have to rethink or reimagine you know, our workforce. And so the party is having a legislative agenda that will uh, talk about these things to our elected officials and uh, try to encourage innovation and technology across the state. Okay, thanks. We, uh, we're winding down here. Uh, you know. Have any closing statements? <laughs> well, closing statements. I really want to thank the people who took their lunch hour uh, to come and watch me. I, I, I did tell a few people that I, I have a bad hair day, and so pardon me. But um, it's ironic because my mother was a stylist, and she had okay. three salons, but I'm, I have the worst hair in the world. But I want to thank you, Dennis, and thank Tech Boy for having me today. I, I really appreciate all the people oh, listening in. I hope that they are interested, if they're interested in being a member or even finding out about what the Democratic Party is doing. We have a Wahoo County, Hawaii County, Hawaii County, Maui County, which are all led by women. And then we have the vice chair of the party, which is also women. So we've got a lot of Wahini power in the house, and we're here to answer the call and um, make changes uh, as the state sees fit. So. Mahalo and Ahuiho. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, thank you uh, to Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you to the listeners <laughs> yeah. on, on politics in Hawaii. If you like it, please go to Think Tech Hawaii. Support, oh, excuse me. Uh, let's go to Think Tech Hawaii. Support uh, the organization and tune in to the other shows. We'll be back politics in Hawaii in two weeks. Aloha and mahalo. <laughs>